Spanish, though in the South you will have communities that speak native languages known as Quechua and Aymara, um, but the English is widely spoken in all tourist areas. And then our currency is a Nuevo Sol. It's about uh, $2 or two soles to the dollar, so your dollar will go far if you're a shopper, um, which I am. So Peru is actually really accessible from the United States, from here in the New York, Newark area. It's about seven and a, seven and a half hours direct flight. Um, the perk, though, is that there's no time difference. So when you arrive there, you're still on Eastern time. There's no mess or, mess or fuss with jet lag. When you get there, you can experience your destination. You can plan your trip according to the same time zone. Um, you know, closest areas, obviously, and it's in Houston, if you guys have relatives out there, certainly a mini up spot, you can shoot up from there fairly easily. Um, airline carriers from this part of the country, um, LAN Airlines and United Fly Direct um, from the East Coast. Weather in Peru, I always get the question, when's the best time to travel to Peru, which I'm sure everybody's wondering about. Um, to be honest, um, any time is a good time to go to Peru, and I don't say that just to be funny or a joker, but it depends on your experience. You should pack in layers because it is a diverse country of different ge geographies. Um, so along the coastline it might be warm, but the mountain region might be cooler in the mornings and the evenings, but it gets really hot due to the higher altitude, the mountain, the sun strikes hotter. Um, therefore, you know, packing in layers is a good recommendation. Um, rainy season is a plus for Amazon, for the Amazon region, because what, as you rent skips to go into various parts of the Amazon, they can actually go deeper into the Amazon than when it's not rainy season. So um, it can be a plus for the cruiser or for the nature lover to go to the Amazon region uh, during the rainy season. Everybody is concerned about the altitude. Well, I get altitude sickness when I'm in Peru. And the answer is it depends on how you plan your itinerary. Um, I'm happy to elaborate further um, if you guys stop by my booth, but really it's about how you plan your trip. Um, giving your body the time to adjust, staying away from that so tempting peace goal when you land in Lima. Stay away from it for at least a day till you get to where you need to be. Give yourself a day, day and a half to let your body adjust to the altitude. Then you continue on with your journey based on altitudes. So our recommended route is to go Lima to Sacred Valley, then go to Machu Picchu, which is at a lower altitude, and then if you want to go explore the city of Cusco, the jump from 8,500 feet to 10,000 10, feet adjusted is nothing. Um, so it's really giving your body um, the chance to, 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 to adjust. So we start a journey in Lima. You always fly direct from here to Lima. Um, it's our colonial capital. It's one of the most well-preserved colonial cities in the Americas. Um, as you can see, this is actually as is one of our government buildings in the colonial city in the capital of Lima. Um, it's also known as the culinary capital of Latin America. Our chefs are able to source such a diverse array of ingredients that they're actually fusing um, the ingredients that they have uh, from the mountains, which is potatoes. Peru has the largest variety of potatoes in the world, over 5,000 varieties. And if you don't believe me, there's a museum dedicated to it. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, it's at the International Potato Center, and they actually saved um, the Irish, they, they helped resolve Irish, uh, Irish famine after World War II. Um, so, Peru uh, saved the day. Then you continue on to the city of Cusco, and you get to Machu Picchu via Cusco. You fly Lima to Cusco, um, and it's kind of a cool experience because this is where you see Inca um, civilization blend with the colonial civilization. So you'll see structures that are traditionally Inca and then you start seeing the blending of colonial influence. It's a really spectacular city to discover. Um, as I mentioned, the recommended itinerary, going to a lower altitude first, letting your body adjust. The best place to do that is in the Sacred Valley. Um, you can also have the opportunity to interact with local communities such as these gentlemen and, and women here that are sitting in this picture, they're very curious, they like to interact, they like to talk to tourists. Even if they don't speak English, they still try to connect. <laughs> they're really curious about the people that are there. Um, you can explore Ojentai Bambo while you're in Sacred Valley. There's some great soft adventure experiences there. But the key is visiting Pisac. This is where you can pick up all of your shopping, um, little knickknacks to give to family and friends. Again, the whole engagement opportunity with the local community. Um, this open market um, offers great deals and souvenirs that you can take back home, or I guess bring back home. Um, from there, another area is Puno, 
This is where the highest navigable lake in the world is, Lake Titicaca. Um, it's also 